this is what really brings the levels to yes light. this is this is all i've wanted for, for me, the, the longest time for the longest time i've been wanting this in the, the game wind and the atmosphere thank by. you it's a much more thank you so so much you're just making me want this game a lot more a huh. so today i'm gonna have something totally new totally different that i haven't done before i'm gonna be reacting to blizzcon online i went to blizzcon in 2018 and it was a blast i had a, such a good experience but this time you know thanks to COVID, it had to be online which allowed me to like join anyways because i was planning on flying to LA or like Anaheim to go to the actual uh, con but since it moved to online it was a lot easier for me to join and you know make a video like this but thank you so much for coming by I hope you like what you see I hope we get some good good announcements I'm hopeful I really do I, I know I shouldn't expect much because of COVID a lot of developers didn't have the chance to work on their products as much as they would like to but I'm still like I hope I get something good out of this I hope we get to see something powerful and emotional so let's go oh, here we go the opening ceremony is about to start in five seconds let's go three two one oh it's here finally here oh okay we're starting with an animation that I think oh okay just a video is right for you when you Firstly, eyes on it. It's such a great feeling. Mm -hmm. The thing that happens is you, you start to feel the excitement just build up. I'm thinking about it all the time, even in my sleep. Incluso a veces por una misma comunidad. Te llegas a enamorar bastantísimo. Oh, they're putting the Spanish community. I love stories. The Spanish speaking community, I should say. You can't experience as yourself. Just like because myself. games allow me to be what I can't. It's fiction, but it's not. And come home, log on to your PC. Hey, and that's my main different world. I am a part of something Jacket. bigger, a part of something beautiful. Fashion. As an autistic Hansel, person, my boy. Video games give me a place where I could be in a world that made sense to me. Mm -hmm. I will tell you that all of my family play video games. Me and my brothers, we would share the computer one hour at a time. I'm going to let them speak and then I'll talk. I'm really enjoying playing video games with my dad. My children. My little sister. That connection between video games allowing us to converse with each other added a lot to our relationship. Games like the World of Warcraft let me meet people that I probably never would have. That is true. That, that is very true. I've met some of my best friends through playing Yes, games. that is yeah, totally correct. I've met so many great people that I will, that I love playing games with and I met them online. Together. It's such Every a hub to, to allow people I'm to connect to with each other and find friends every, from everywhere. Back in Warlords of Draenor was one of my favorite memories. I managed to find that one hidden pylon with my one mutilisk. We beat hardcore Inferno Diablo. I'm also able to hit gold in competitive in Overwatch. They had someone. Did they say you take it gold in competitive in Overwatch? So I was able to. <laughs> I hit diamond this time, this season. Long, I hit diamond for, for the first time on my main account. And I hit it on tank and DPS. I hit it on both. E pela conquista ter vindo. A gente se sentiu muito. Caramba, a gente conseguiu algo incrível aqui. <risos> I killed the Lich King! I killed the Lich King! Like one of my dreams, like you know how you you have like a mental image that you hope to see in the future. For me, that's like me playing video games with my family. I hope that one day I get to have a family, and one day I'll walk through the door or I'll come downstairs, I'll walk into the living room, and I'll see my family playing video games. That's one of the dreams of mine. There isn't a huge LGBTQIA plus community in my city. So when I was able to play a video game, I was able to start talking with people who didn't really care that I was a gay male. But video games were my escape. When totally. I was a teenager, my dad mm -hmm. was diagnosed with ALS, and I looked to video games as a way to escape from that sort of reality. Everything happens for a reason, and I'm just glad video games were there for me. Damn, this is making I'll me emotional. Playing video games. There's no way. I imagine myself. <laughs> no, one day not gonna stop playing video games either. The gamer. Playing video games <laughs> has shaped me. I don't think I would be who I am today. My passion, my interest, my excitement, they belong. Video games opened for me the world, and because mm -hmm. of that, I'm forever thankful. And I can't wait to see what the hey. next generation holds. That's a Doomface cosplay. Thank you, Blazer. Thank you.
even though your games might not be the most balanced games in the world, they are awesome and I enjoy playing with friends. It's been such a good experience playing Blizzard games, especially Overwatch. I've met so many cool people through Overwatch. I'm just so grateful that I've got to have this experience. <gasps> Here we go. Welcome to BlizzCon Let's Online. begin. A celebration of 30 years of Blizzard communities and 30 years of Blizzard games. 30 years is 30. so many years. It is. And last year maybe felt like I'm not even 30 years old. But throughout the years of Blizzard Entertainment, from 1991 to today, many of us can associate certain games with milestones in our lives. Maybe you were a little kid the first time you played The Lost Vikings. Or in high school when you first played a Diablo game. I played Overwatch in high school. you met your partner while you were playing World of Warcraft. That's the awesome uh, thing that about hasn't happened games. to me. They give us Maybe I should play World of Warcraft for that. ...that are relevant to the times in our lives and experiences that we carry forward with us. Games are here for us during good times, and they're here for us even when we feel alone or maybe uncertain. Yes, sir. Games are coming home. Familiar. Comfortable with a connection and a sense of belonging. And while many of us spent most of 2020 in our actual real life homes, games became even more of a place to get away. Yes. To be free from outside concerns, even if just for a little while. So if it wasn't for video games, I would have gone weird. insane by now, just being stuck in, inside this Usually, house. I've been here for so gone. long. But luckily, I had, I had video games to play. Warcraft faction, the Alliance. Oh. <laughs> or my favorite faction, the Horde. I, I get confused. Usually, I'd be speaking to 40,000 of you in person at the Anaheim Convention Center. Mm -hmm. I was there in 2018. Around the world. And usually, that would be a perfect way to celebrate. But nothing about the last year. Can we just give each other like a virtual hug? You know, like the pandemic has been hard. We need everyone. it. I think we all need it and right now. Let's many, give it a virtual hug. Just like we all need it at this one point. Thing that the last year has taught us. It's that being apart physically doesn't stop us from moving forward. It doesn't stop us from connecting with our player friends around the world. Mm -hmm. Diving in as warriors and heroes and checking on each other as humans. It doesn't stop us from sharing our latest epic gaming story or celebrating those of others. Games continue to unite us. They do. They really, really do. Now, to that be is honest, most of my social interactions I are wasn't through sure video games how at this well point. Could work from home. There are thousands of people all needing to work together in creating our universes, games, and experiences. Never has it felt more true that it takes a blizzard to make a blizzard game. And in 2020, it became clear that the magic of creating a blizzard isn't just tied to a physical location. It's tied to the people who work here. And I continue to be so proud of each and every one of them. Thank you, Blizzard. We no, even though a lot of people talk shit about like Overwatch 2 and, and Diablo 4 not coming out and like, you know, taking so long. I understand and we should understand that they're struggling just as much as we are. A celebration of you. They don't have the, the means to get the videos or like the games out DPS, as fast as tanks, they would like to. I'm pretty sure they just feel just as frustrated as we Zerg, do. Terran, even Protoss, if not even more. Blackwatch, but like, we have to understand Shimada, the situation, you know. The heroes of Sanctuary and of the store you know i even myself i've complained about overwatch 2 and it's it's a meme at this point that overwatch 2 is not coming out but like we should understand the, the circumstances Warcraft. you know we'll be showing you what's next for both shadowlands and classic oh i'm sure you're all burning in anticipation <laughs> for that one hearthstone is getting back to its roots in a major way we can't wait to show you how We also have news for our Diablo community. 
Hey. Some of you I started playing Diablo to dip your toes the past couple into months. the depths of hell in the Diablo Immortal Technical Alpha. I personally, Ooh. I really enjoyed seeing players embrace the multiplayer aspect of meeting in town. We can't wait for more of you to get your hands on it. So, it's only the beginning of the year, and already there is so much to look forward to, even though we can't yet be together in person. The Overwatch. Wait, oh, I was about to say he didn't announce Overwatch. Off in spring, hey. And we'll be watching closely to see if the San Francisco Shock can continue their championship. What do you all think? Who do you think is gonna win? I haven't been following the Overwatch League too much World anymore Warcraft because I moved to Esports YouTube and I keep forgetting to check it out. With the Arena World Championship. But I also heard that there's a lot of players that are feeling depressed and like not Already motivated to play the game. So I don't know. Starcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 East. I've been watching a lot of Overwatch and, on, on Twitch anyways. The ESL Pro Tour. But not necessarily the Overwatch League. And qualifiers are already underway for the first online stop of the 2021 Hearthstone Masters Tour. With the first event taking place next month. Ooh. But before we get too far ahead, let's take a look one last time to when times were a little simpler. In the early 1990s, the internet was a baby. <laughs> Those CD were simpler times, yes. Finally eclipsed cassette tapes. Uh, cassette tape, it's a rectangle piece of plastic. <laughs> there's a tape inside. Yes, sir. Music would get recorded on. And sometimes you needed a pencil to wind it and make it tight. It, I know, it sounds crazy. We were all playing video games on Super Nintendo, Sega Genesis, DOS, or Mac PCs. When did it start? I started with Nintendo 64. Big Sis and Auto Exec Bat. So many. I played some uh, Super Nintendo, but I didn't own one. I would have to like borrow it. We could relive them. My first console was a Nintendo 64. Are they rebooting some of their games? The green flag drops. Let the carnage begin. Ooh. Holy oh, Blizzard Arcade Collection. Let's go. The Lost Vikings. Nice. I don't know most of these. I, I'm, I'm too young to like to have played these games, but like I've heard of them. And I've definitely seen them. <laughs> I think the Lost Vikings is the one that I've heard about the most out of the Blizzard games. I mean, my first Blizzard game that I played a lot was Overwatch, so I think it's still their newest game. So I was late to the Blizzard community, but I still enjoy it. And like once I joined the Blizzard community, I started going backwards and looking into their older games. Because they're really good. Man, this is gonna be crazy to play those games. Usually, I don't know why, but like older games, like arcade games, tend to be harder to play than new games. The Blizzard Arcade Collection, featuring the Lost Vikings, Rock and Roll Racing, and Blackthorn. These are ports of the games just as you remember them. Okay. Allowing you to relive the original experience of all three titles in 13 different languages. Oh, With nice. With a couple of quality of life upgrades. Oh, what? As an example, we include very modern, cutting edge functionality that wasn't available in the early 90s. Motion sensor? Both saving and loading of games. Oh. And for those of you who purchased <laughs> any Blizzard digital I went to... anniversary bundle oh, via Battle.net, you'll automatically receive the Blizzard Arcade Collection on PC oh, wow. today. Nice, I forgot to buy it. I completely forgot that was a thing. You ready to hear about some other video games? Oh, here we go. Carbot Animations, a 30th anniversary cartoon. <laughs> Let's go. Rock and roll racing. Ooh. <laughs> the Lost Vikings. I'm king of the world. <laughs> he fell off the car. <laughs> oh no. Oh shit. Blackthorn. <laughs> Is that earlier, McCree? It's high noon. 
do, 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 do. <laughs> See ya, nerds. Oh, that's World of Warcraft. Oh, Warcraft, yeah. <laughs> um. Hello? Did he just did he just teleport to Diablo? <laughs> What can, I do? what can I do? What can I do? What can I do for him? Is he just like slashing blindly? Shaw, shaw, yeah. Oh shit. <laughs> Starcraft. Is that a paper bone? <gasps> oh shh. Morta, Vespa, Gaia. <laughs> it's okay, he's fine. He's still going. Oh, Diablo too. <laughs> oh. They're trying so hard to catch him. <laughs> they said no. Work of three. Dang, I'm really enjoying this animation. Now, War, War of Warcraft. I don't know why I always have so much trouble pronouncing that title. Prepared! <laughs> hungers for your soul. Is he gonna poop him out? Oh. <laughs> Damn, this guy just said, get out of my way. Is that Diablo? Your time has come. Starcraft 2 ba -ba -ba -bum. <laughs> Oh man I wish I knew more <laughs> Oh that poor little guy I wish I was more familiar with the story behind all these games Diablo 3. Okay, that's the one I played. Oh! <laughs> oh, a beautiful butterfly. Strange. <laughs> oh, that was a nice transition to uh, Hearthstone. Seems you're ready for the real thing. Is it Heroes of the Storm? <gasps> I nailed it! Hell yeah! <laughs> the cover hey, is here! Look at, me. Oh, looks like we got an <laughs> look at this That's thing! We're gonna do great! I am in the groove! <laughs> <Huh>? Online. Oh. <laughs> that is so like first season of Overwatch. That is so like person first season of Overwatch, 100%. Remember when you could put just Symmetra turrets on the payload and just pirate ship your way to the goal? Oh, Blizzard. Hey, there's Overwatch. I feel like they've been showing way too little of Overwatch this time. But I really liked it. That was a really cool cinematic uh, cartoon animation. I really enjoyed it. It went through the whole timeline like crazy. That's a really good job. I really liked it. As I said, I wish I was more familiar with some of the games so I could like understand what's the meaning behind the stories, but... Okay, here we go. Finally, the Overwatch stuff that I've been waiting for. I'm so excited and I cannot explain to you how nervous I am. But I'm just as excited. Overwatch behind the scenes of Overwatch 2. Let's freaking go! Here we go. I can't wait. Welcome everybody Hi, to BlizzCon. We know nice to see you again. that you all want to hear more about Overwatch 2. Yes, please. Allow us to invite you behind the scenes to explain hey, more of what we're doing King's Road, and right? why. Everybody, please hit record. Fingers crossed. We lost Scott. Let's <laughs> off to a good start. <laughs> this is going great. <laughs> We've been uh, assembling Corona. Why are you one of do the best teams us? that I have ever worked with. 
I'm nervous. <laughs> and I'm so proud Look at all those of smiles. the progress that we have made together. That is things throw. We really There's like a... the stylized Blizzard drop world. down. Imagine that it's coming forward, boom, boom. This starts to spin. The scale and the scope of this game have so met. So that's that how they've been having the meetings to like talk about the game, the development of the game. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> let me start. Over. Overall, I, I think we've done incredibly well <gasps> as a team Don't moving go. to work from home. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shadow play. Uh, there have definitely been challenges. But the team is Ooh, really putting at everything we've got behind this game. To me, it's the next big step in so the they're Overwatch re universe. New they're heroes, using the same maps. Modes, major okay, story that is so cool. With competitive and PVE, I see Overwatch 2 as the Overwatch for all of my friends. Mm -hmm. You know, we're always inspired by what story and franchise development does with their animated shorts. So I'm, I'm thinking if they're we gonna really like to bring that cinematic take the maps that are already the there game. and expand on them. Because they're gonna need a bigger map, time. you know? I am super geeked out about Overwatch 2. Unless they just do like a different game mode on game. the same map. Gets better and better. There are some things that we if just I remember can't do without a sequel. The, the map on Rio de Janeiro, that one. The whole mission so that was long so and needed a big map. So, far, so I don't know how they're I gonna fit you everything in into the, the, look the two city maps that they have in right now, or the payload maps. You know, any of the maps that they have in Overwatch One right now. So I'm All hoping that they can like expand home, they them. They want to see one of the new maps that we've never talked about before. Ooh, really? I can let's just go. Like, oh, I want the pin that they have I on can here. I just talk about anything that I want to. Yes. You're, you're you're serving this up to the guy that is like unintentionally <laughs> leaked information in past <laughs> interviews. <laughs> you can do it officially now. Okay. Okay. Here we go. So let's leak one officially. One of the maps that I'm I'm most excited for in Overwatch 2 is our Rome map. Ooh, we're going to Rome. <gasps> We always oh, want Overwatch so to feel sick. like this globetrotting adventure for our players. So we're having director. a lot of fun coming up with the Overwatch version of. Imagine Rome. if I can get we like an internship romantic with Overwatch. Sort of this that would be a powerful amazing. feeling of old world architecture. One of the most it exciting things sick, for me dude. is the early building of these maps, where we get to sit down together with key people from the environment team, level designers, effects groups. We'll spend some time talking about moments in the it game looks... that we really want to see. Like the so I guess it makes sense. It, I was gonna say it looks similar to Rialto, but it's also we'll go back in Italy. And so over, or we'll do a concept painting of certain things based on Damn, that. that looks we so try cool. to draw inspiration from as many different. I sources really want to see, possible. for example, images of one the of our actual environment map. artists had just taken a trip to Rome, <laughs> and he returned uh, with like thousands of pictures and was so excited um, to work yeah. on a map set in Italy. There's a lot of ancient architecture. There's Rialto already in there. Represents the, the empire it that also, it used to be. I feel like it so looks a lot better than Paris, back. and I thought Paris looked that are destroyed gorgeous. Life, we kind of rebuilt the Colosseum, kind of huh? Style. It's yeah. one of the most beautiful pieces. Imagine of going through the whole I think we've freaking map for the entire game in story and mode. Absolutely. So you're not just like away. stuck to a payload that you have to like keep pushing. You can actually like. Can we reveal walk more through maps? It. Yes, Scott. <laughs> Scott, why don't you have the honor? Why don't you reveal? Let's like, is there go. an artifact? Like, let's pick an artifact I, I one. Know. Are they showing all of this because? About. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna save it for later. About. New York City. New York City is just an amazing Overwatch location. Yes. Let's go to New York. We're really striving. Oh, look at the gray. Look at the shades of gray. As possible while we still went from Rome, all colorful and gorgeous, a lot of amazing to like buildings a lot of shades of gray. Pieces that just, especially for artists, stands out a lot. And they usually use this kind of Art Deco style from mm -hmm. the 1920s, 1950s. We started in Ooh. an area that's a little bit like the village. There's some smaller shops there. There's a fire station, little pizza places and things <laughs> that people that are familiar Imagine if we can with interact City with the map will that either would be recognize so cool. or maybe see the reference that we're trying to make with some of our different locations it feels like something you haven't seen in other games before because it's uniquely overwatch mm. so they took a real life well, we scenario a real Otherwise, life city we just have to reveal more maps so. <laughs> and they made it we into an, an overwatch PvP. style they modified it and you know, one thing that I think is really interesting about and PvP also he just said there are more maps, so keep is an eye out for that. Some of the philosophical that. changes we're making to the approach. PvP feels different, and new. We're up, 
upgrading our combat feel. The roles are playing differently. When it comes to all new maps, it's a pretty big departure. I'm, I'm trying to uh, listen from where right we now. Are on live right now, so I, I can't wait to see. When they said philosophically, it the that's their thing. word for saying we're changing the core of the game. We're also experimenting okay. with the idea we call role passives which are passive abilities that a hero can have based on what role they are. For example, currently like in our internal them? builds, uh, the tank heroes all have knockback reduction against them, and Ooh. they also generate less ultimate charge for enemies that are shooting at them. Damage oh, dealing heroes have a movement speed bonus, which is great Look for at that. We don't make flanking hair. around Did the map. Did you see the Widowmaker hair? And uh, healing heroes, support heroes, that, have, oh, it's called uh, the brain? automatic healing that kicks in after they haven't taken damage for a while. Very similar to Mercy's passive, but a little bit of a lower rate. Mm. One of the more shocking changes Did they that say the we've DPS been exploring one, the passive in for the Overwatch DPS? 2 PvP is a change to the tank role entirely. That's applied entirely. to all the tanks. We want to try to make them more toe-to-toe -to -toe brawlers and less Ooh. characters that just stand back and protect other people. So, for example, for Reinhardt, we've given him two charges of fire strikes, so we can throw fire strikes a lot more aggressively and more often. <laughs> also, his charge, he's able to cancel it now, and you can steer it more what? aggressively, so you can, you know, not quite turn a corner, but you can definitely more accurately pin targets. And because you can cancel it, it allows you to yes, use it much please. more aggressively and yes. you know, really go after those so targets cool. without feeling like you're going to sacrifice you know, all of your positioning, everything to get there. He's almost more terrifying now what? to be able to unleash his full arsenal <laughs> more often. Did you see that? Kind of the charge into the, the fire, another fire strike, the, uh, the hammer down. The changes that oh, we're trying. Oh my, and my. They might not shift. That's just the reality. But the changes that we're trying right now are to try to embrace more of that instinct. You just pin people into the blizzard. Did you see when that? When they want to play a big, burly character that looks aggressive, and feels like it you know, should be You know, now you don't have to charge and risk going off the map. You can just cancel it. It's sort of like... A, imagine doing that with Genji Dash. Shortly after BlizzCon, we we spun up this group, our combat feel group, um, to really just work on what happens... Oh, I'm really happens liking this. I'm really liking this, uh, these updates. ...holds the trigger. We're putting a ton of effort into looking at all of our characters um, and trying to give them even a more visceral weapon I may have to go back and see if they... From sound to VFX to animation to the they design the passive for of the these DPS. units. All new sounds for, for a lot of our weapons in the game and a whole new sound system that's driving what? it. And we didn't just level up a unit, we leveled up the rest of the game. Ooh. When it we sounds like Call of Overwatch, Duty. You know, we spent quite a bit of time working it sounds on like Call of Duty. fire sounds and just, just general combat feel to make it feel really awesome. Uh, we're revisiting pretty much everything. Nothing's off the table, so we're looking at okay. even kind of small things such as quick melee attacks that every hero has. So they have kind of new audio pass and uh, a new kind of feel and the visual effect when you hit things. One of the better <laughs> efforts we're eyes. undertaking for Overwatch 2 is what we're calling our Weapon 2.0 sound oh, what? pass. What this is is a oh, big overhaul to the weapon about. systems in the game. That means the way the gun feels in your hands, you could feel the ammo running out as you're getting lower on the clip. We really tried to amplify those sounds to better. So they're making it though, like a Call of Duty game. game and the gunplay, like, the, the, the shooting side, basically. Too. Another key to the weapons was yeah, getting them to feel that, like they're that's in like an more environment. realistic. This meant working with Convolution Reverb. It's a new system that we've implemented into Overwatch. It's a way that we can capture the like acoustics of the sound... environment and transport it onto the sounds that oh. we're using. So we went and captured tails of guns in different environments through our weapon shoots. <laughs> that looks so much fun. <laughs> oh, just for the sound. And then we've cut them and applied it so that we can support a lot more environments. Now we're sporting outdoor, urban outdoor, warehouse tails, Ooh. tight tunnels. But what is it gonna sound like with six room. people shooting at the and same time? It gives time. a lot more presence to the weapons and the way that they react in the world. It does the sound a lot has more a lot immersive. Since one came out. Yeah. On top of that, I think we really want to push the visceral nature. Of like Overwatch used to combat. sound very like. So we focused a lot. Like not fairy tale, just on the you know, kind of like but also with mysterious, how not the, mysterious, the like cartoony, pretty shoot. much something yeah, like that. You really feel every single shot leaving the chamber. But and now it sounds a lot we have to do like the real. It sounds like they're using real guns to make the sound. Making sure that the camera shapes are crisp, 
making sure that if you get shot, you know exactly these tight indicators show up on the outside of oh. your reticle. All these things play into making the game feel not just So all the, all the shooting style now is gonna be more to like a Call of Duty Take game, you know? For example. What we wanted to do in Overwatch 2 with his weapon was make it really feel incredibly powerful. And that happens with a bunch of different elements <laughs> yeah. mixed together. But it really feels like the gun is almost just outside of your control. A lot of that comes down to this camera shake technology, where every set, every oh, time you fire it, yeah, weapon, it does shake. you want to feel like it's running through your entire body. And the camera shake gives that extra bite to every single shot out of the chamber. It oh, I see. Yeah, it does. Really it is a very weird. difference, yeah. You guys got a sneak peek of Sojourn from Last mm -hmm. BlizzCon. She's been... Uh, under development for quite a while, and she's actually she at this point another become gun, a like... lot of people's favorites in, in house. And when we look back at Overwatch, like that was originally created, um, there was a lot of heroes. You that see were that made charge? From she was getting charged for something. A weapon type, for example, Farah was based on a rocket launcher hero. Mm -hmm. Widowmaker is clearly like kind of the sniper. We thought there was a weapon that was kind of missing that would be a lot of fun to play with, and that's a railgun. It's so much Almost. fun to play test to have this really that powerful shot. That sound on the Widowmaker you know, uh, sniper rifle. Really what the heck? She's, she's all about that aim skill. So okay, you, I, I, I'm liking that weapon. Lower. We're still exploring new games. But that Widowmaker shot, and I'm we're still also like onto that. Older game modes that people are more critical of. You know, we're of the mindset. Maybe, are they gonna do the classic one? Maybe two CP doesn't exist in Overwatch Two, and maybe there's <laughs> a new cool game mode that replaces yes, it. We yes, yes. We really want Overwatch Papa Two Jeff. to feel Papa like Jeff. the next give it evolution. To me. Please give it to me. A true sequel to uh, the first I'm game. I'm so excited. Not an two add on. CP. It's not Go a small away. part. It's not an extension of the original oh, game. Man. This is an evolution and a replacement to the original game. And I think it's exciting. They're thinking about Hero getting rid of 2CP. That is exciting. It's the hardest to wrap your head around if you've never played one of them. Oh, no, I need to pay attention to this. The goal around Hero Missions is for these to be this co-op PVE experience. I personally only play competitive mode. Like I'm all about that competition. And I have friends that they don't want to do that at all. So I'm really looking forward to a game that I can play hours and hours with, with my friends who aren't in that competitive. That makes sense, and you it's know? also something that I'm interested in. But that's Hero missions are the content that people are playing as they are leveling up their heroes. And so for a system like this to really sing, yeah, I you need a lot of missions. Those sounds don't, don't sound like, it doesn't sound like, like just in Overwatch, like, to get to the top. if I close my eyes, and, there's a lot of really, and really I just hear the sounds, that, that, that ain't, that ain't Overwatch. So the heroes I wouldn't be able to guess that it's Overwatch. And some light story I'm not saying it's bad, I'm not saying I don't like it, I'm just well. saying it's a lot different. The goal is to make I'll have to play the game, or watch gameplay, hear all the guns going off at the same time to be able to tell if I like it or not. To that much content, so have like different sets of enemy units that people mm -hmm. will be fighting against, and there's different hero mission types at the same time. You see the skin for Baptiste on the lower all left? Of the multiplayer maps that we've done. And we're also adding new spaces onto some of these maps. They are expanding on the maps. That's what I was saying. It's a huge challenge for the art team. We take maps that a lot of people love and recognize, and we have to add a lot more art and level design to it. In this one hero mission play test, we came up to an area in King's Row that usually has a gate on it. Suddenly that gate opened and I saw a new area of King's Row that I had never seen before. I, that's what I was saying at the beginning. They did gate expand type, on it. And the payload may decide to take this new route instead of going the usual route. That was really, really cool. It was oh! like this eye-opening special moment. Yes, please. I already love King's Row. Fuck that map. Get it away from me. But on the did you see the environment side, on the very left early side? On our own free time, Hold on. We made a prototype of a sandstorm on the Temple of Anubis map. And at the time, we didn't know what we wanted to do with that, but it looked awesome. We looked at it and went, oh my God, we absolutely have to do this. So we put some new technology in place that allows us to do this dynamically. You start the mission off, clear day, midway through the mission, suddenly this I've sandstorm or heavy talking weather. talking about weather up. It made the world the just feel so much more alive. Yes. There's a sunset, daytime, nighttime, but depending on where you yes, are in the world, you. these look different. <laughs> California or Hollywood would have what we call a California sun. In Nubani, <laughs> there's a great African sun that happens there. You no start to get way. a sense of space and mood. This is what really brings the levels yes, to life. Yes, this is 
This is all I've wanted for, for me, the longest the time. For the longest time, I've been wanting this in the game. The the Thank by. you. So much more Thank you so, so much. You're just making me want this game a Before lot you more. Before start a mission, you look at a map. It's nighttime in Necropolis. Or there's a sandstorm in Necropolis. Players can make some comp choices based on knowing this information. Characters it's like going to be tricky for like start to be people that play. More valuable because they have abilities that oh. allow them to see through the sand more clearly. Oh, I was going to say, it's going to be tricky because there's people that don't have really good enough computers to run those dynamic ranges yeah, or those dynamic maps. Players are being asked so, to do different is there going to be a way to turn that off? Mission to the next so that they and if you turn it off, is that going to be an advantage for you? For example, we have Gather and Return, where you're trying oh, to go and grab these different canisters to kind of save them oh. so they don't go off and affect the population in a negative way. It creates so this like really diffusing cool bombs. tension in the world, where on the one hand, you're trying to split up and go grab all these canisters to be as efficient mm -hmm. as possible. But at the same time, now you're having these sort of special enemy units that, spawn that are really difficult. Cool. And if you kind of get caught by yourself, it that turns looks into so a pretty cool. bad situation situation really quickly and it feels extremely cooperative and like mm -hmm. a very different way to interact with so what i was saying universe. is that what if somebody is playing with the weather on experimenting and somebody with the weather off ideas and just well that person have an have advantage because like they can see better death I mean, yeah, if you're making videos, you want, the, you want the weather because it looks gorgeous, it looks so much better. And enemies for people to but it's going to be a disadvantage on the gameplay side. Night after night, that's going to be something missions, that we have to keep an eye out and for. work through the progression system, leveling up their heroes. Oh, okay, this is it. The, At the, the, the tree is 2019, cool. we started to talk about progression and we showed the very early version yeah, they showed of Tracer our talent system, and Genji, I think. which I think was really cool. We had that one talent where like Meg became the rolling <laughs> snowball, which was a big hit. I have hit. not We've seen really that one. I have that not seen out. it. I'm real excited about talents. You can play the same hero I mean, all so we need is more balls, ways. right? Now with the skill tree, Hammond is you not can enough. have fun every night doing different things and kind of experimenting. Ooh. Yeah, the talent system is like really deep. That is, that is a lot bigger than I thought it would be. Every has different trees. You might open up 76's tree, and as you're leveling and picking new talents, you're starting to feel your hero change. Ooh. We've had some pretty hilarious versions of the healing one where his biotic field travels with him. It also repulses enemies. We called it the snowplow build, where 76 is like running through spaces, pushing enemies away from them. <laughs> that means it's super fun because it's like we get to break all the rules Lucio? that we sort of What's establish for ourselves. And uh, we get to really take the gloves off and do crazy Wait, things like jump out like and do wield grenade launchers and have mercy be able to area effect res their whole team at once at super long range through walls. It's been a That's ton of fun. That's OG Mercy. Mad making all this stuff. That's just OG Mercy. Using these kind of kinetic weapons like Soldier 76's rifle or fire attack like what Reinhardt's flame strike does. As soon as you start to mutate mm -hmm. these things with talents, all of a sudden maybe you're doing freeze damage or electrical damage. But it gives the animators a bunch of crazy opportunities. You know, the animations are going to change to show the freeze and shatter. What? And if you, you know, shock someone with a lightning attack, what? they can shake in place and stuff, maybe chain to other enemies. All sorts of stuff to make you feel like you're controlling the battle. This, I'm so excited ways. for this game. I cannot a tell RPG you. I'm nerd myself. The first time I opened up the talent tree system, it was like. Oh my gosh, this is this is speaking my yes. love language. Like yes. I just want to play. Exactly. And I, I feel see, the like, same way. I invest and how am I gonna play this character? Yes, it's so great and you like you start <laughs> you at just the bottom of the people. tree. Like, yes, oh my. exactly. Like Tracer gets to do what? Yeah. And then you start working and kind of planning how you're gonna get down there. It's like oh, yeah. it's so fun. <laughs> When we look back at BlizzCon 2019 and we talk about some of the criticisms that we had, one of them as a development team that we felt was that the combat was just not engaging enough. So the fact that our combat wasn't highly engaging to us as players meant it's that we had a Overwatch problem one? with the enemy units and that they oh, just the weren't feeling interesting enough. Just because we show something to the public, it doesn't mean that that is what it's going to be. That is we very make true. discoveries where things aren't working how we want. They're not reading how we want. They're not fun enough. We're totally down to reinvestigate, yeah, reiterate, totally. and just really find ways to level kind of all aspects of things until they feel good. I would say a major focus of all of 2020 was to make the null sector enemy units more engaging. And some of this was adding new units and evolving other sick. units that we had. 
interesting combat for us is mm -hmm. varied combat for okay, us. So we're talking about the so AI. Got sometimes it. we're going to ask you to protect something in Overwatch 2. Sometimes we're just going to ask you to get someplace. Sometimes we might ask you to escort something across a map while it's being attacked. And so it's a different type of spawning. Look at Jeff. A different type His of face is like, that are, don't that are in there, and it's mess a it up. Don't objective. say it. There's a don't lot of say units it. Aaron is talking about. You can Lots see that his face. He's so nervous that people are going to say things that they shouldn't say. They're going to go too far it's really gonna help and leak something. Look at him. Look at him. Sure that Overwatch 2 Look at his is face. A blast. He's just making sure One nobody leaks anything that they shouldn't. One of enemies is what we internally call objective units. And they're typically units that don't even attack players. The simplest version would be something like the Breacher. It's two legs with this huge bomb on its back. It was built to do one thing. Slowly and methodically march towards its objective, and then it transforms, and the bomb opens up like a flower. It starts spinning and charging up, and you hear this awesome sound, and you know you have a little bit of time before it's going to explode, and you Wait, have to take it out. Wait, that didn't do any damage. Oh, okay, we're about to gonna kill me. We have units oh, like it's the to slicers, damage the objective. Go God, they're, they're little. Yeah, we call them the chickens. <laughs> the little chicken slams are running really fast. The chickens. You know, we have a guy we're training with right now who flies. Oh, that's and drops a drone. These bombs that create these kind of ever-expanding smoke fields that you have to escape from, but because they're super deadly, um, so you really get to use your mobility options to kind of escape that. Okay. There's things like the polar. You could be moving through these a darker alleys, and as soon as you hear that polar spawn, it suddenly becomes like really spooky and kind of scary this very tall They're putting a lot of different genres into this game blindfolded three orbs that circle around her as her eyes and oh. we, we basically spun those orbs <laughs> around her head as a big tell <laughs> launched them at the player and then it activate this tractor beam and it's bringing you in and bringing you in and then you get this awesome like anticipation of the hair oh. opening up so you know what's about to happen oh. <laughs> One thing we've just recently Ooh. been experimenting with is this idea it's like of elite units. It, but it's a scorpion we didn't want instead. the elite units to feel like they're just, oh, this guy's got double health and double damage. We want to make sure the elite units feel like they have they're different scary. behaviors and have different attacks. So, for example, an, an Omnic Grunt, normally he just kind of, he fires his gun, he dies pretty simply. Mm -hmm. If you fight elite Grunts, his weapon fires in a burst fire pattern. It's very deadly if you're close. And if you manage to take them out, That's they don't just die right away. They instead can crawl on the ground towards you and you, you, oh. know, you try to back away. <gasps> that is um, so freaking you know, fast. If they get to you, they can explode. That is so freaking fast. Artillery what the heck? at BlizzCon. We're all just staring at this and we're like, what is? what are we going to do to level this up? One of the things we really felt wasn't coming through was boy. the damage states. We intend for players to shoot these guns off, but currently it's not reading as something that can happen in the game easily. We change the design, we change the animation, and we go back and forth and just continually iterate. Hey, that's we like decided, a fireworks. Hey, you know what? We're going to just delete half of these damage states, so now it's super readable. From an animation standpoint, oh. we decided on the spinning barrel version. It just did this really nice kickback. The tip of the barrel opens up when it's about to fire and shifts into place and boom! That's really that's amazing alias. to be fighting an artillery unit. It feels so unit, different, you know, to see all of these the guns. They're actually uh, visibly things, damage, and machines you can blow on the maps that we already kind of know. Side, and really makes you feel like you're there and it's Because we're fun. not very used to like seeing this, you know? you know? So far, you're fighting null sector. These are evil killing machines mm -hmm. intent on marching you down. The way you're gonna stop them is by shooting them. And we wanna make sure that feels responsive and visceral. Nice. Really making sure that when they take a hit, it feels like their whole body has been punched, almost like hit by a truck. <laughs> it That's does really look that way. sells this fantasy that you're playing these superheroes. One of the cool pieces of technology Makes that we created was what we call chain hit reactions. Oftentimes, you'll find oh. Null Sector bunched up, marching maybe a half a dozen units abreast. That is cool. You expect if you shoot one, they're going to knock them to their buddies. So yeah. we make that happen. Turns out it's really fun, too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. The One hero of the things that we showed last year at BlizzCon was the new looks for our heroes. They showed the Reinhardt, going in Tracer, like, and Mercy, I think. The essence of your oh, hero, Lucio and May but as also well. kind of show that a hero has evolved and kind of changed and moved forward. So we have a lot more new looks. So I'm excited if to, I see get to see how players and fans react to all of the ones for we've Hanzo. done so far. Just one. Maybe we'll share some of those new looks uh, yeah. today, which would be cool. We're going to reveal... Uh, McCree's new look for oh, Overwatch 2 okay, as well okay, as here we go. And we're really excited to show off some of our first villains uh, with villains? Reaper and Widowmaker. But oh, first, okay. I wanted to talk a little bit about 
technical wear, kind of like technical clothing. Uh -huh. What that really is is using you know very techy fabrics as well as you know, look at the very level of detail. What the straps, heck? Designed in a way that it's very aesthetic. Can you even pleasing. see it in the game? With McCree, we took a couple of different approaches. He's got this classic cowboy look that. Tell me really if he doesn't look even more buff. If you try to make him too sophisticated or too Just techy, it might me? not feel right for the character. But he doesn't as a look more artist, buff. You always want to change things around and try different shapes and and silhouettes. So we did identify his red serape as the main thing mm -hmm. for McCree. We also tried a couple of different things with McCree's cowboy hat. We didn't really want to mess with that too much. Because yeah, that's makes a sense. very iconic part of him. Yeah, so that's thing another like piece that, that, that piece we of kept. cloth and the hat. We tried Those some are like the retro their... cowboy looks that mixed in some tech here and there. Um, some that were a little bit more Just techy like the than staples others. Some for that my were grade. a little bit more classic Ooh, cowboy. Ooh, classy. We gave him a little bit of a longer beard. And it really gives him a nice kind of like a, a more aged look. <laughs> he looks, yeah. What's different about Farah than some of our other heroes is they Farrah's just took my crate that was already a daddy and they just much. took him into a daddy. Um, it's more about experimenting on different colors. So it Ooh, felt very really appropriate for her to be the one to harken back to those original Overwatch colors. Damn. Of white and one of the things that we wanted to update on Farah was her visor. Instead of being completely opaque and reflective, we tried a little bit more of a transparent approach and being able to see through it a little bit now allows us okay. to see some more, of her, some more of her emotions. Reaper was actually the ones I was very excited to work on because oh, they usually I could see a lot of potential skins. in how we can integrate Dude, they all look more buff or is it just me? and his cowl and his armor and I feel how like they we all can look more buff. all those shapes really sing within that classic, you know, Reaper silhouette. We tried a couple takes with the first pass, like oh, completely silver arms, more layers to his jacket. Reaper's mask is obviously pretty sacred to us, mm -hmm. but the thing you'll notice immediately is that it's now completely silver. Instead of the bone white, he's got the, this like almost like deadly edgy silver that just gives him that classic Reaper look. With Widowmaker, we started with the IDA stage, exploring a breadth of ideas. Look at the we braid, I love the like braid. a more insectoid approach, treasure hunter. I love One the of hair. them made her feel like a classic Bond villain. So we kind of steered it back towards one of the more um. cyberpunk looking ones, almost like a futuristic <laughs> femme fatale, which is I'm basically already what love Widowmaker with it. is, but I'm she already even feels in love more with upgraded. It. So I'm super glad that we went down this route. We played with different hairstyles too. Widowmaker has the really long ponytail that's really key part of her look. And we really liked the hairstyle on one of the designs that was more of a parade, and it was mm -hmm. really interesting look that also preserves. I love it. I love. I love the skin the most. I think this is my my We've been favorite working a one lot so far. With, um, our Domino engine and making our cloth look better. Now that we have this cloth tech, we're going to be able to make some really cool, unique silhouettes that will help mm -hmm. them stand out from other heroes. We put a lot of time and effort into our face rig. And what I mean by that is we're gonna be able to get really close <gasps> to these characters and it's gonna feel really cool. It okay. is absolutely worth right, we're gonna get some and close ups to invest in the technology. In the game? And that way we can make these characters do more things that we oh, haven't like really that. been able yeah, to okay, do. Yeah, okay, so we are. It's been super exciting working on the new looks for Overwatch 2. And it's just been so inspiring to watch the team try things that we've never tried before. And I just can't wait to show up more in the future. Overwatch Good job. I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm totally enjoying this so far. I'm enjoying the whole update. Largest opportunity we've had since All the of the updates. That's what I meant to say. To really expand what Overwatch even means to our players. In Zero Hour, we saw that some of the heroes got back together, but we're also seeing that there yeah. seems to be a second huge Omnic uprising. Yep. We're going to learn who's behind that uprising why that's we know who it is how globally spread is it wait that was the Thor story and Reinhardt. development group yeah that's Thor really and Reinhardt. the bearers of what the big story is that we were going to oh, tell we get to see game. a lot more we had a lot of interaction with them they're working on in-game cinematic intros and outros for every one of our story missions it's been really great to see this collaboration grow and develop and the story is just a little more integrated into our missions than yes, ever really please. has yes all the available heroes get dialogue for a given mission we have NPCs. We have multiple hero choices. Have some Lucy OS. We have all sorts of events that are happening that are driving players Ooh. to interact with each other or parts I of so the environment see this or game. other characters. I you so want to get my I'm gonna get my hands on this game. So how Toronto. do you take that bright shiny future and create conflict in it? How dark can the world of Overwatch go? Mm, that is a good the question. The different challenges that these characters are gonna have to overcome in Overwatch 2 are things that they haven't ever 
dealt with before or dealt with on this scale. So what we had to do was literally strip it down to those bare bones of where are these characters in their lives? Overwatch has been disbanded. And now there's a situation where the world's in trouble again and the world needs the heroes again, but they're not allowed to be doing what they were supposed to be doing. That we makes a lot of sense, actually. We started to book these locations so we could brainstorm over and over oh, you can see different the green screen versions his hair. of what the Overwatch 2 story campaign him out. could be. And we basically had these whiteboards that we were carting around everywhere. The room was filled with whiteboards and we would just you, write every day. If you look around their hair, with the you can see that they're actually sitting in front of a green screen. Oh my gosh, we they're being this cut out. We had these giant sticky notes and each one of them would be a mission with a bunch of notes on it. You know, somebody say, well, what if we moved Rio to the end and they'd physically grab it off the wall and stick it on the end. And we did this for a while, you know, until we all felt that it was pretty close to what we wanted. Then we could send it to our writers. I room. want to so see this so bad. Clear direction of where we want. Imagine the if they release a cinematic short. Ultimately, we come up with something that we think is right for the game, and then we pitch it back to the game team, and they point out everything that uh, we missed. And that allows us to actually back up and go and make it right and make it better. Mm -hmm. Because the scale of this story is so huge, it takes place over the whole world basically. It just requires a constant iteration, constant refinement to make the story as best as we can make it. From writing. We go to storyboards. The storyboards get crafted with the edit. From there, it'll go to a previs department where they'll start to flesh it out in Wait, 3D. Wait, that's so cool. Once we've kind of figured out our that's camera like a work and our 3D combo. that'll then go to the animation department. And then we end up going right into the game engine. Wait, that's Sombra and Widow against Genjin Sen. Was Is that going to be one of the story missions? How to integrate this story and this narrative? Looks so crazy with to me. The gameplay. How like I'm in so this. That's my like major. It's a lot of cin battle, cinematography and animation. When you get into the game, it's like how you go from like the little doodles on a sticky note to the 3D fully rendered models. Really it's just so crazy. It doesn't matter how many times I see it happen. It's, it blows me away every time. Straight through to the mission. Adam Burgess, our lead composer, <laughs> has been working with the IGC team, with the game team, developing themes for all the heroes, all of the locations. Why would you do Habana? Habana is a really bad man. As the cinematic director, whatever we're just crafting should never override that looks so the gameplay. Beautiful. We want to make sure that the player's experience going from the cinematic to the gameplay is seamless and it feels like Oh, nice. I like experience. that. I like that. The engineers, we have to find a way to actually make that come to fruition. The Choreo tool is a tool that allows people to coordinate different events to happen at the same time. Like in Rio, if you played our demo, one of the buildings explodes. And so that kind of event needs to happen as you're running by and you need to have oh, it timed. Because yes, if it blows up too early, then you don't see it. It allows story moments in missions that interact with the environment, that interact with our characters. The new tech, the new <laughs> abilities that we have just now fly are up, allowing us to push fly our up storytelling the farther than we could have previously. What's also really powerful about Choreo is that, you know, if somebody has an idea, they can mock things up really quickly. We got to show the Widowmaker making this awesome introduction. And Casey was able to quickly put a really rough prototype oh. in Choreo. And Philip would come in and on the fly, he's making quick changes. They play test it. Damn. Something that would normally take weeks. It was done in like a matter of days. Each story mission has its own custom Blizzard. map built for it. Can and you just maps give me a little bit of this game? Giant, I just want to see a little India bit of it. Of I want to get my hands on it's it. It's a fun map because it has a Wait, few story beats it? that we've taken from recent comics and, and characters in the game. We've written a history for each city so that the cities feel lived in. And I think that okay. informs the artists so that they know like what it is that the city has been through. Yeah, I really Bird like how they're expanding on the maps. Like Grand's they're taking workshop. maps that we already we know. We created a space that kind of fits his height. And they just so expanded it. And <laughs> scalable tables. And we designed the space as if we were a tour, you know? <laughs> Molten steel is pouring out of walls. It's uh, pretty that's funny. epic when you walk into it. Imagine Reinhardt walking through that Toronto uh, is under warehouse. siege by Null Sector. When the players arrive here, there's a dynamic snowstorm. So as you make your way through the level, the snow is slowly building no, up. No, that's all, all I want end, is weather. Honestly, I love the weather and they in the map. In Overwatch 2, we want to give you choice to be able to play this character or that character. So we're designing a lot of systems around how their relationships develop over the course of the story Soldier. missions in the campaign. Yeah. <sighs>
Oh, I want to see this. So I want a movie. All on screen, I want even a cinematic short. Time. And it's fantastic to actually see them I'm, all I'm, I'm interacting in like and working together in drought. ways that we've I just never want actually more seen. Overwatch. I've always Lord, thought about it and hoped for I it, want it, but now so it's bad. actually happening. It actually requires us to have a whole new branching dialogue system. If you happen to have Genji and Mercy in the second mission of the game, you might get different dialogue oh, that's about that their so relationship. Oh, that is so cool. Our voice actors bring the characters to life in ways that Yay. everybody has fallen in love with, from Inside Blizzard to okay, the that fans. Okay, that I like too. It's just to hear I feel, I feel like I feel like they're hitting the nail on the all head together, on all paper. Interacting. Like, it's while they're talking about treat. it... Emma, don't! <laughs> While they're talking about it, it sounds like perfect. It sounds many flawless, involved, but I really need to get like my hands on it to be able to experience the real game. You know, the real person. thing. It comes from a group, and it's a really talented. Fun it's not that group I don't have faith in all of them. I know the game is going to be amazing. I just, I'm just afraid that they're going to, they're overselling it. They're just showing us the best parts of it, and then once, once we get our hands on it, we're going to be so let down. And Overwatch is a game that I put so much time and effort and love into that I just want the best for it. And I can't We've wait to play Overwatch 2. about the game, about the, this universe. I know you all love it so much. I don't know if you noticed, but right we haven't now, seen even a single frame of Hanzo. We have a night of Overwatch 2 and have it be a really fun experience. And I think we need some more time so we can say it's perfectly polished in the way Give that we want Give me a list. It. A drawing of Hanzo, any stride since we first announced this and showed it to the community Ooh, at this con in cool 2019. Light. The thing that I'm most excited about is that moment There's a when barrier we there hand now. the game over to the players. Mm -hmm. We want to create something that really moves people, really touches people. That's why we do it. We create the game because we want it to become part of your life and for you to experience it. I mean, Overwatch 1, when I was my four years of high school, I didn't go out once. We're upping the bar. I would just get back home it's from from school five games in one. and it's play Overwatch for eight hours a day until I went to sleep. The new and I would do that every day. The new aesthetics for the new looks bring you closer to and the And they met some really, love. really cool people in Overwatch started. that I'm so the happy that I got to meet. experience is much richer. We are making cinematics that push the boundary of what we can do to tell stories. We want this dynamic world. We want things to feel alive. Yes. I'm really looking forward to being able to expand the world of Overwatch for our players. We're really trying to tell this epic story. In order I'm to so make excited. a game great, it, it takes oh, time, energy, it collaboration. <laughs> we have just an incredibly professional team At of least designers he was and pants. artists and engineers. We just love bringing this world to you guys. So many cool characters. It's just a blast working on it. Our goal is for Overwatch 2 to be the worthy successor to the first game. To so be far, the next it sounds like it. So far, it sounds like it's going to be. We have big plans. Thank you this for is sticking with us. Like, I, I, I even forget that it's a sequel. You know I what I mean? Like a lot of people awesome. are afraid that a sequel is not going to live up to the expectations. I keep forgetting this is a sequel. Want to try I'm taking Overwatch 2 as, as its own playing. game, you know? So let's go. I'm not relating it to the previous game. I'm just, it feels so big and so immersive and so cool that I just, I think about it as its own game. So I keep forgetting it's a sequel. Dang. And that was it. I just placed online the Overwatch section of it, I think. Uh, I so wish they had shown like a cinematic show, you know, anything else. I want more Overwatch lore, even if they don't release the game, that's fine. But you know, show me more, I want I, I want a cinematic Dolby's short. Dolby is a proud partner of BlizzCon Line. Watch Shock uh, versus the world in Dolby Vision oh no, and that's Dolby just me. I have such a, in the Dolby Access such app. such a big hunger for Coca -Cola, Overwatch 2. The official refreshment of BlizzCon and Online. I love their cinematic shorts so much that I'm just like... Craving for a... <laughs> this is cool. Still, no Hanzo. Show me Hanzo. Where is Hanzo? I saw Genji. Like not even in the background. Oh, there he is. Okay, at least I saw him once. At least. Come on. What else can I ask for? I feel unstoppable. Oh, this is cool. Imagine Widow hanging out with all the rest of Overwatch, just chilling. Turning up the heat. I'm ready. 
Yeah, this this uh, update is already out. I don't know how long it's gonna be out for, but it's already out. I think this is the one that's on right now. It already passed. So Reaper's gonna be the next one, or the one that's on right now. I haven't looked. What is that? Wait, what? Oh, that's a new game mode, isn't it? Um, is that Bounty? Yeah, that, that's a new game mode, Bounty. Okay, until the 25th, so there's six days left. All right, but thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed the updates as much as I did. I think I'm excited. I, I wasn't expecting... I was hoping for the game to be announced or like, you know, a, a release date or something, an alpha beta. But, you know, we have to be realistic here. And I want the game to come out great. I don't want another Cyberpunk 2077 to happen. So thank you so much for watching and I hope, I hope we see each other in Overwatch 2 some other time. Uh, but yeah, I'll see you later. Thank you. See ya.